Uh, I'm Gordon Guyatt. I'm a professor of medicine and of clinical epidemiology and biostatistics at McMaster University in Hamilton, Canada. So one of the phenomena that we've been seeing in randomized clinical trials is that over the recent years, much more often they have been stopped early for apparent benefit. Uh, that has been more, most dramatically the case in cardiology and oncology, some other areas like intensive care, uh, and uh, a very striking differential publication of these stopped early for benefit trials in the most prestigious journals. So uh, intuitively it makes great sense to say if we are seeing a very large benefit from uh, a apparent, apparent very large benefit from a treatment in a trial. For ethical reasons, we should stop the trial, not keep giving people placebo or withholding the treatment, uh, and disseminate the treatment potentially as quickly as possible because of the large benefits. Unfortunately, uh, these, uh, this uh, stopping for apparent large benefit can lead to uh, some large and even drastic overestimates of treatment effect. And I'll explain why that is. On the slide here, you see that there is a line that represents no a treatment with no effect, and in this particular situation, there is a true beneficial effect. But it is a relatively small beneficial effect. Now let's assume we were going to do a number of trials addressing this particular question. In some of the trials, as you see, uh, the uh, effect right from the beginning will be very near to the truth. But sometimes the effect will be underestimated. The treatment may even appear harmful early on just because of random chance. But as more and more data accumulates, you move closer and closer to the truth. Sometimes it'll be in the other direction. Some of these trials uh, if you do multiple trials of the same question, will show large overestimates of the effect early on and then move closer to the truth. Now let's assume we set a stopping boundary and we say, if we see a large effect, we are going to stop because, my goodness, this treatment is extremely beneficial. And what would happen if we looked after every event occurs or after every few patients are enrolled? Well, many of those trials will cross the stopping boundary, particularly early on, and will generate large and misleading treatment effects. Statisticians have been aware of this for several decades and have instituted stopping rules. So we don't look after every patient or every few patients or after every event, but rather we look at a particular time, say after 250, 500, and 750 patients, for instance. Well, that reduces the problem, but it doesn't eliminate the problem. There is still a, a substantial chance that we are going to stop at a random high, and, and, and that will result in misleading large estimates of treatment effects. Um, this has been described, and uh, we, if we waited and accumulated more patients, it would move back. Uh, toward what is the, in fact the real effect, and this has been described by the individual who modeled this initially, a statistician by the name of Stuart Pocock, as regression to the truth. So that is the phenomenon of why we are liable to get big overestimations of treatment effects, potentially from trials stopped early for benefit.